Hello, and welcome to the Focus on Floods website. The following movie segments cover different aspects of flood risk and preparedness. We've started this project with the National Weather Service with the goal of sharing tools, including the new flood forecast and warning alerts that can help you prepare in the case of a flood event. Beyond that, we want to share with you the larger issues of how and why you should be prepared for a flood, even if many years pass between events. Nurture Nature Foundation began its flood education initiative after direct experience with the regional floods in the Delaware River Basin in 2004, 5, and 6. We had just finished renovation on a large property in eastern Pennsylvania that was flooded right as construction ended. Our challenge was relatively mild, but we saw the challenge faced by thousands in the basin whose lives were changed by these events. We have spent the last four years developing ways to share with public and professional audiences the critical messages about the ways that flooding affects communities and to engage those audiences in actions to prevent the worst of that damage. On this website, you will see interviews from a variety of authorities on flooding, including municipal planners and officials, academic researchers, flood survivors, National Weather Service representatives, and a writer who chronicled the effects of the 1955 flood of record in the Delaware River Basin. From them, we have learned that floods will always happen, but working together, we can lessen the loss. In comparison with other natural hazards, flooding is the nation's most common and costly, and often the most deadly. Communities have historically settled along waterways, and for good reasons, including for transportation, access to water and wildlife, quality of life, and recreation. But flooding is a natural part of the river's processes and is not something that can be prevented. Simply put, Human settlement in floodplains puts communities at risk for repetitive damage and devastation. Being prepared in advance of a flood can make a tremendous difference in the amount of damage and disruption you might incur. One of the tools we will be highlighting here are new automated alerts that can be sent to your email, internet, or cell phone by the National Weather Service. We will show you how you can sign up for these alerts that warn about rising water and could dramatically increase your time to react. To better understand our flood risk, we need only look at the flood history of our region. Records show that the Delaware has had major floods about every 20 years on average, and there have been many more floods on the tributaries. These events have devastated many tens of thousands of people and taken scores of lives. Perhaps the most notorious event occurred in 1955, when tropical moisture from two hurricanes brought a series of torrential rain events to the basin. As so often happens in these events, people lost their homes, their life savings, and in too many cases, their lives. In a river valley near Stroudsburg, the Broadhead Creek tributary brought a wave of water down on private camps, killing 40 in the middle of the night. These victims were caught with little or no warning during a time when severe weather alerts were still in their infancy. Today, we have much better technologies, but they are only as good as our ability and commitment to use them. Whenever we hear stories of people fleeing their homes without enough time to even grab family photographs or valuable property, or when someone dies in floodwaters from a flood that's been predicted hours in advance, we think it didn't have to be this way. New push technologies allow people to receive automated flood alerts to internet, cell, or email, but you have to sign up. The Flood Alert Network System works via many gauges all along the Delaware and its tributaries that constantly monitor the streams and upload the flow of information to a satellite. The staff at the National Weather Service translates all this information in a sophisticated model that helps compute a prediction of how much water will reach key points along the rivers and streams and at what times. If flood levels are likely, the new push technologies allow for all the people who have signed up for the service to be notified by an alert that they can select to have sent to their internet browser or email. Although warning time for a flash flood is much less, the National Weather Service has developed a special system to alert people to the weather conditions that signal a possible flash flood. You can receive this type of warning to email, internet browser, and depending on your service, your cell phone, but only if you sign up for these services. We have a section on our website with specific instructions on just how to sign up by enabling what is termed an RSS feed via your web browser. Our site also posts the real-time river levels at key communities along the Delaware. Throughout our work, one of the most common misconceptions we face is from people who live or work near waterways, but presume they're safe because they're outside the 100-year floodplain. The commonly used but misleading concept is the 100-year flood 
which leads people to believe falsely that major flooding will occur only every hundred years on average. The truth is that even smaller storms can produce tremendous damage. In many areas along the Delaware River, the flooding in 2004, 5, and 6 was much smaller than a 100-year flood, but the damage was nonetheless extensive. And that's just one problem with the term. The other is that many areas well outside the 100-year floodplain are liable to flooding too. In fact, nearly 30% of national flood insurance claims come from outside the 100-year floodplain, often in places where people thought they were safe. That's why Nurture Nature has started using the terms high, moderate, and low risk to describe various regions of the floodplain. It's worth noting that our city of Easton, Pennsylvania has just raised its planning standard from the 100-year to the 500-year floodplain. This has toughened regulations to make sure that in the future, inappropriate businesses, like gas stations, aren't built in the floodplain, and that a current gas station uses special tanks to prevent leaks during a future flood event. Floodplain maps are a good starting tool for determining your flood risk, but you should also talk with neighbors and investigate your terrain to determine whether your property and the access roads to your property are subject to flash or major river flooding. You can find floodplain maps at your city, municipality, or county hall, and we recommend that you have a floodplain professional assist you in interpreting these maps and the actual landscape so that you understand any complications that might increase your risk. Please know that almost any small streams in your midst might experience a flash flood. And in the Delaware Basin, that means most all of the tributaries. Flash floods can be quite volatile and dangerous, and in some cases, calm waters can rise to a dangerous level in minutes. It's been said that the last inch of a flood is the most expensive, and that's because even a small amount of water in a home can cause a tremendous amount of damage. Indeed, there's very little about an average home that fares well during a flood. The government website, floodsmart.gov, has a home damage calculator that shows how the depth of water in your home can affect costs and what these might be. One option for protecting yourself against financial damage from flooding is flood insurance, which is available to any American household, but not included in regular homeowner's insurance policies. Furthermore, if you know you have a high risk for floods, you can take more proactive steps by elevating key electrical and mechanical systems, moving valuable items to higher floors, and creating a rapid response plan that will allow you to quickly remove water and get things dried out. Some questions. Do you have a sump pump, a high capacity drying fan, and disinfectant cleaners on the ready? These are some things you might need to consider. Along with these tools, building relationships with your neighbors is important for sharing news of flood events and for developing networks to help each other in the case that cleanup is needed after a flood. After determining your risk and making sure you have advance warning of flood events, one of the most important things you can do to be prepared is to have a household flood emergency plan. Such a plan may be as simple as determining what items you need to take from your home, what routes are safe for evacuation, and where you plan to meet if separated. People at risk for flooding may consider building a family go kit, which would include items you would want to have on hand in case of an emergency. Some households also keep detailed notes about previous floods and the river levels that can affect their property, and develop evacuation maps that anticipate road closures due to rising water. Please remember that preparing for a flood will help you to be better prepared for many other types of disasters. Floods are often chaotic events that involve conflicting priorities made all the worse by frantic motorists. Nearly 70% of all flood-related deaths involve people needlessly driving into water, often on roads known to flood. Most of those incidents stem from people making the poor decision to challenge the water with their vehicle. In some cases, drivers are unaware of the water due to poor visibility. The results can be equally fatal. The fact is, despite what you may have seen on car commercials, passenger cars and trucks are easily susceptible to being washed into the current in just 12 to 18 inches of water. And when this happens, the occupants are quickly trapped in an extremely deadly container at the mercy of raging floodwaters. The planning stage we mentioned above could help you avoid roads that you know are subject to rising water. Please see our links to learn more that you can do to protect your life. Please remember, turn around, don't drown. The Delaware River has always been a part of my life. My family has lived in Easton near the river for generations. Growing up, Easton's big floods and the devastation they caused seemed to be a part of history, something that happened in the past but wasn't likely to happen again. 
But after seeing the human and environmental consequences of the floods of 2004, 2005, and 2006, that changed for me and for the people at the Nurture Nature Foundation. The tools we have mentioned here, including flood alerts and preparedness plans, are vital to minimizing the damage from floods that we know will come again. We have taken these steps ourselves and hope that the many communities of the Delaware River watershed will take similar steps to prevent and prepare.